Welcome back to the show. I'm Jay, the Middle Class Dirtbag, and today we're going to start a very exciting series. It's going to be me breaking down this entire bike into pieces and putting it back together. You may ask why I'm doing this. Well, I could take it to a shop and have it all tuned up and cleaned up, but I want to see how much time, money, and effort it's going to take me as a DIYer to try and break this thing down and do it myself. I know there's going to be some challenges, particularly with the suspension, and there's going to be some specialty tools that I'm going to need, so I might need to buy those. I want to see as a DIYer if I can do it myself. Each little mini episode I'm going to do is going to involve looking at a different piece or part of the bike and then break it down by cost, time, difficulty, and the equipment needed. And then that way you could see if you want to get into some of the stuff or you just have a sh want to have a shop do it. As our first episode, I think it's gonna be easy to start with this chain. All we're gonna do is figure out how to take this off and then we're gonna measure it and see if it needs replaced or not. In comparison to other tasks on this bike, the chain removal is gonna be pretty easy as well as measuring chain wear. All you need is a set of tools to uh, remove it, such as these moose tracks and a ruler. The tool I really like using for removing master links are these moose track tools. The cool thing about these is they not only can take on and off a master link, they also double as tire levers. I've taken them on the Colorado Trail. They're really handy to have and very sturdy, um, pretty hard plastic. So that's what I'd recommend. I'll put a link in the description to their product on Amazon. In order to remove the master link, you must first locate it. It's a rounded piece of link that looks way different than any other link, also marked by an eagle with a directional arrow. Once you have located the master link, what you need to do is put the master link pliers on either side of the link, making sure that the pliers go through. Gently squeeze the pliers together to release the link then you must pull the link apart in order to get it to release fully. Now that we have the chain removed, it's a pretty straightforward task to see whether there's been chain stretch. Chain stretch just means that the rivets inside each of the links have maybe moved around a little bit and kind of caused that link to lengthen. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find, you're just gonna take a piece in the middle of the chain you're gonna mark the middle and the center point of that rivet. You're gonna line that up with the, the start of the ruler and then make sure all the way down that it's lined up with the ruler. And then you're gonna find the 12 and the rivet that's closest to the 12, you're also gonna make a mark in the center. Now, to measure whether or not this chain needs replaced, you're gonna push the ruler down, push the chain into it, make sure all your marks are lined up. If you're all your marks are lined up and it lines up with the 12, your chain does not need to be replaced. If your chain has lengthened, and I say that a little bit, but if it's become a little bit stretched out, the, those rivets getting a little loose, by a 16th of an inch, you need to consider um, replacing your chain, although it's not mandatory. If it's greater than 16th of an inch, you definitely need to replace your chain. This can prevent a lot of wear and tear on your drivetrain, keep those teeth from getting mangled, and you having to replace the drivetrain instead of just the chain.